you actually think about it, Denji is kind of an asshole. He's selfish, lazy, petty, basic, and cold-hearted towards other people with an extreme disregard for someone else's life, at least in the beginning. He isn't quote-unquote a good person. But despite all that, from the moment he appeared on screen, I loved him, and so did you. And it's not because he's the main character, as you would know there are plenty of MCs who get their fair share of hate. The truth is, it was by design. Tatsuki Fujimoto knew exactly what he was doing, and I'm here to talk about that. And your dog. And your children. Hello and welcome back my filthy weebs, it's your friendly neighborhood degenerate Kai and today I'm gonna dig my teeth into some chainsaw man meat. What? Ah shut up, I know what I said. Now imagine for a moment that you're Fujimoto and you're writing Chainsaw Man and the protagonist of your story is a selfish, lazy, petty, basic and cold hearted asshole. So how do you make people like him? Let me give you the options. A. You make your protagonist a lovable idiot. B. You give him very relatable motives. Or option C. You use the tried and tested method of saving the cat. Or is it option D. Where you use the tried and tested method of kicking the dog. If you picked any one of these options, you'd be wrong. Because if you're Fujimoto, the right answer is yes. He didn't just make you like Denji, he made sure you'll never even question why you do it. The lovable idiot trope in storytelling is nothing new. We've had it for as long as we've had stories. And there's a good reason for that. It's easy and effective. You wanna make a character instantly likable? Easy, make him an idiot. However, it can also go horribly wrong because not everyone likes a bumbling dum-dum. That's where the lovable part comes in. Now, I'm no psychology expert, but I believe it has something to do with children and pets. I believe we subconsciously relate this cutesy idiotic behavior to these buffoons, which triggers our natural protective instincts and creates a sort of connection to the character. Many shounen protagonists are guilty of being lovable idiots and Denji's case is the same. Everything he does has a childlike appeal, which in turn gives him a likable outlook. However, I don't think it's fair to draw that comparison because saying that Denji is likable only because he's a lovable idiot is like judging an onion by its outermost layer. Because that is just the first layer of the Denji onion! There's more! A lot more! The second layer is relatability. How much you relate to a character means how much you understand them and their beliefs, values and motives, which leads you to create a direct emotional connection with them. And it's not limited just to the protagonist or the good guys. Time and time again we find ourselves drawn to the antagonists, the despicable villains of the story. We are able to connect with these monsters despite all the heinous acts that they do, because we relate to them. We know where they are coming from. We understand their values and motives because they reflect our own beliefs. And we find ourselves saying, holy shit, this homicidal maniac is fucking right. Denji isn't even half as bad as that. So it's no surprise if we find him to be relatable. But the question is, what is it that makes him relatable? Well, to answer that question, I'm gonna ask you another question. What is the quintessential difference between the traditional shonen protagonists such as Goku, Naruto or Luffy and Denji? The answer is... Motive. Goku wants to be the strongest fighter in the universe. Naruto wants to be Hokage and Luffy wants to find One Piece, something that no one in the entire world has ever done. These are impossible tasks for an ordinary person. But when viewed in retrospect and from the perspective of the real world at the time, it makes perfect sense. 
In the Japan of the post-industrial boom, spirits of the Japanese youth were high and their aims even higher. So it's no surprise that we see that reflected in the anime of the time. However, the times have changed. Now Denji wants jam on his bread. He wants to touch some boobs. In the world of today, which has gone to shit real quick to be honest, we just want a quiet happy life. Many of us don't have great ambitions. For many, a warm meal and a loving partner is more than enough to have a happy contented life. And even that is not an easy thing to get. It's all the more apparent in Japan where people are overworked and underpaid to the point that more and more people are giving up on getting married simply because they can't afford the luxury of that life, leading to a drastic decline in the country's population. So we understand Denji because he wants what we want. We are able to relate to his feelings and therefore connect with him. And even though that connection is enough for you and me, it certainly isn't for Fujimoto because he goes one step further and adds another layer on top. And that layer is sympathy. There are two ways in which Fujimoto makes us sympathize with Denji. Saving the cat and kicking the dog. In case you're not familiar with these tropes, saving the cat is a selfless act of kindness that establishes a character to be a good person. On the contrary, kicking the dog implies an evil act done for the sake of evil and establishes a character to be a heinous villain. However, if the kicking is directed towards a certain character, then it makes us sympathize with them. At this point, I really don't feel like I need to tell you how these two tropes play out in case of Denji. Ever since the first episode, he's been kicked and kicked again. He's alone. He lives in a freaking pile of junk. He eats bread scraps for food. He's deep in debt with the Yakuza. He doesn't have even the most basic human rights. He even had to sell his freaking organs for God's sake. And amidst all that darkness and despair of his cold, insignificant existence, he finds little moments of happiness with his pet devil and only friend, Pochita. The sheer sense of joy that he displays whenever he's with Pochita is, in all honesty, contagious. And this willingness to find hope and optimism in his otherwise bleak and bitter world is what really makes you root for him. And this is just the beginning of the anime. Truly, Fujimoto is a master at crafting real, believable, human characters and Denji is one of his best. And the way he makes you totally love this idiot with all his glaring flaws and without any growth or character development is absolutely fucking spectacular. And that's it from me for today folks. Check out some more of my videos if you want. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.